So one of the challenges in uh, pediatric medicine now is that we're just emerging from a phase where it's very difficult to diagnose children and really the technology over the past five to ten years has transformed that ability to make diagnoses and so kind of a big frontier now is for genetic diagnosis. Today we're talking about the Center for Personalized Medicine here at Primary Children's Hospital which is the children's hospital for the entire region so for about 1.7 million children we are the hospital that um, if there's any problems they would need to come to. The hospital is run by a large organization called Intermountain Healthcare which is a not-for-profit organization but the partnership that's so critical is that it's not just Intermountain Healthcare and Primaries, but that it has kind of the academic firepower of the University of Utah. And so that collaboration together at the center is what's really kind of driving the ability to use these new technologies or develop new treatments. So rapid whole genome sequencing is a genetic test where it is the most inclusive type of genetic test that can be done um, with a rapid turnaround time of less than a week where we're looking at the coding and non-coding region of genomes. With this test, we're really looking to see if we can identify an underlying genetic cause for a child's health issues uh, and then talking to the parents about those results to integrate it into, into their family life and into the child's health care. My colleagues love being able to utilize this technology because we're really able to find a reason why the child is so sick and then be able to personalize our care. It's had a huge impact on the children that I take care of in the cardiac ICU. It's allowing us to make rapid diagnoses. It's allowing us the opportunity to give directed therapies and save money by not doing tests that aren't necessary if we already have the molecular diagnosis. So um, a seven-year-old girl was camping in the Uintas, a local mountain range here in Salt Lake City, and she had what we call an aborted sudden cardiac death. So she had a life-threatening arrhythmia, stopped breathing, and then recovered. We did an electrocardiogram, and one of the intervals on that electrocardiogram called the QT interval was massively prolonged, the longest I've ever seen in my 22-year career. And in addition to that, the electrocardiogram showed this alternating pattern of electrical instability, which meant she was right at the moment of having another one of these life-threatening arrhythmias. So we activated our rapid whole genome sequencing program, and within 72 hours, we had our smoking gun diagnosis, which was a damaging genetic variant in a gene called SCN5A, which is the cardiac sodium channel gene. This child went home within five days of her admission because we had this diagnosis, we knew she was on the right medications, and it was safe for her to travel back to her home state. This would have never happened if we would have sent a gene panel. We would have had the result in three weeks. So this is a real world example of an accurate, rapid diagnosis that changed the trajectory of this family. The Heritagene Children's Study is a big study that we're conducting here out of uh, primaries, and the study is trying to look at the genetics and genomics of children's health, and so it kind of has two components. One component is understanding uh, what genes uh, lead to disease, and so looking at large groups of children with different kinds of diseases. And the other part is um, understanding how we can help improve health, so understanding like what things are protective for health and prevent disease. When a child has a disease, oftentimes there's a very kind of a time-sensitive or time-critical element to treatment, and uh, if a child's having a seizure or having other life-threatening things like heart problems or heart arrhythmias, uh, making that diagnosis in a, a quick fashion is critical, oftentimes for saving their life or getting them the right treatment. This little boy was having about uh, 30 seizures a day. He was hospitalized for about 20 times. With one of these um, episodes, he had to be put on life support. And as kind of a last step, we sent this rapid genome sequencing, and several days later, the test result came back, and he had a treatable form of epilepsy. And so this child, we started that treatment that same day we got the diagnosis. He was out of the hospital a week later, and he hasn't been back in the hospital since. I think CPM is doing an excellent job in letting the families and the physicians and the pediatricians know that they're available and that they are there to allow the families and the patients to come in and obtain this information about themselves, obtain this very precise information about their disease state. Over the past few years, we have had a technology, rapid whole genome sequencing, which is performed in critically ill children. That has been a research tool which is now on the cusp of standard of clinical care for these critically ill children. Moving forward, there's still over half of these patients remain undiagnosed despite 
the whole genome sequencing. Here at Primary Children's, we have a clinic set up for the reanalysis of children who remain undiagnosed. The RESEQ program is short for reanalysis sequencing, so it's basically giving patients a second opportunity to find a genetic diagnosis in, in patients that we suspect having an underlying genetic cause for their problems. What we're focusing on is following up with those patients and reanalyzing the data from the genetic testing they've had done before. Uh, and in doing so, we hope to find new diagnoses. We learn that new genes are being discovered that cause new disorders. And so I've seen in just a couple of years, I've been here, new diagnoses from tests that were previously negative, but now we've learned, or actually, there is a genetic cause to it. And that reanalysis pathway is going to include new research tools like blood RNA sequencing, or RNA-seq, as well as long read sequencing. So what's great about the CPM is that it's, it's at the cusp of this interface between research and clinical care. Over the years, we're going to see this just explosion in new technologies and new ways of helping these families and children.